Today on Muscle Car, Red Sled gets some backbone and a new stance. Plus, ride along for a test and tune day at the track. Hey, welcome to the Muscle Car Shop. Our 67 Le Mans is out of here. We're back on task with our 61 Impala, Project Red Sled. This thing was in pretty bad shape. Okay, really bad shape when it rolled in here, but we dove right in to see what we were really gonna have to deal with. We saved almost everything we took off, except the 47 years worth of dirt. A lot of these parts, like the seats, these things will be hard, if not impossible, to find. Some of this stuff may not be reused, but it could be helpful when figuring out exactly what we need to order later. We lifted the body off the frame and sent it out to be blasted then pulled the motor and tranny. We're ready to knock the front end apart on this sucker, but without all the weight to hold it down, the spring could come flying out. I'd like to keep all my body parts, so I got a plan. After removing the shocks, I'm placing a jack underneath. Then a chain is threaded through the springs and arms. This way, it's safe to go ahead and release the tension. Okay, now here's something not a lot of people know about, but it's good information to have. There's usually a flat spot right on the side of these spindles, that's not just for decoration, that's to smack with a hammer to get this thing knocked loose. The frame's got an appointment with the sandblaster, so everything has to come off. Now you might want to stand back from your TV, because parts are going to be flying. Yes. Once the frame is stripped down, we'll measure the front, center, and rear sections diagonally and cross our fingers that we won't be doing any frame pulling. It's 107 and a half. About 107 and a half. So that's good. 67 inches. Right on the money. We're also checking to make sure it's level. Choose a point near the center, shim it to level, then check several other points along the frame. Much to our amazement, this rusted hunk of metal is square and level, so we can send it off to get sandblasted with no modifications. Now, from 1958 to 1964, Chevrolet used an X-frame, which was designed to flex. Now, this may be great for ride quality, but if you're putting an angry 409 in your car like we're putting in a red sled, this could pose a pretty serious problem. And that means that we're going to be doing some pretty big reinforcements to our frame. Now, I don't know exactly how much torque that old chunk of iron is going to be putting out. And that's a little piece of information that I need to have. So I'm going to come down here and talk to the man with a plan. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing, Rick? Good, good, man. I guess you got the uh, word on Red Sled. What do you got cooking for us here? Well, we found you a nice 409 core engine, but it's on a slow boat from somewhere, but it'll be here shortly. Right. What did come in is this nice stroker kit from Eagle Specialty Products. And what's cool about it is it takes it from a 409 cubic inch to a 481 cubic inch. Nice. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know a whole lot about the 348s and the 409s, but I do know that they use a design that's unlike anything else. Right. Which, what's unique about this block is the combustion chamber is actually built into the block rather than the head. Oh, I'll be darned. Well, you know, we also have all those Edelbrock parts that's going to get bolted to the top end of this thing. So what do you think we're going to be looking at for horsepower numbers here? Well, hopefully we'll be above 500 horsepower and 500 foot-pounds of torque. Cool. But we'll know that once we get it on the dyno. <laughs> yeah, nice. Well, let me know when it shows up, man. Okay, we'll do it. Cool, thanks. See you later. Well, here it is. We got our frame back from the sandblaster, and she's back down to her birthday suit. Now, we could actually seal this up and paint it the way it is, but that ain't how we roll here on Muscle Car. We're going to smooth this thing out because Red Sled isn't just going to be another pretty face. She's going to be detailed from the bottom to the top. That means we got a lot more work to do on this big old chunk of steel. Now, these factory welds here, well, they're not going to cut it. They're staggered, and we want a continuous feed for strength. Now, once we've added a couple spools of wire, we're going to grind the weld smooth. A buddy gave us a pretty good idea how much power this chassis is going to have to handle. And this stock X frame is not going to cut it. Now even Chevy realized that there were some weak points in this design because they added reinforcements in the convertible models right over the top of the rear frame rails. Now we're going to follow their lead, but we're going to take it a step further. We're going to use the eighth inch plate to reinforce some key areas. Now the first thing we got to do is extend this factory bracing further up this frame rail. That's going to give us a lot more strength and rigidity up here in the front portion of this X. Now down the sides we're going to add another big brace that's going to run down both sides. That's going to stiffen up the whole center section. 
Now this part right here, obviously, we're going to have to cut a hole so we can access the bolts for a carrier bearing. The plate's going to run all the way to the back here where this rear mount is for the rear suspension. Now this is going to take a heck of a beating from that Stroker 409, so we're going to box this in and reinforce it. Now keep in mind also this frame is actually sitting on here upside down, so you're looking at the bottom side of it. Now this is where we're going to add the bracing like the convertible has. This cross member here, it's not so much beat up as it is just ugly, so we're going to chop it out and put a nice piece of round stock in just for aesthetics. This rear piece here, this thing took a pretty good hit somewhere along the line and it's bent up. We could repair it, but it's going to be easier and faster. Chop it out and just build a new one for it. But where we got to start is go and build some templates. We're tracing all the pieces we're going to need on the cardboard and cutting them out all at once. After the trace onto the sheet metal, it's time for the plasma cutter. The edges need to be ground smooth, making sure the outlines fit. We'll clamp them down, beat them and heat them until the contours are just right. The brace behind the rear end is getting cut out and replaced with a piece of round stock. It'll be stronger than the old one and look better too. One more area that needs attention is this rear brace. There. I'm using a shear and brick to form a new one out of 14 gauge sheet metal and then weld it in. Hey, check it out, man. Made that for the bottom side of it. I figure we're going to be spending so much time underneath this thing, give us something cool to look at. Besides, you can use your mad TIG welding skills to attach it. No problem, man, but I do a little grinding. Oh, man. All right, I'll trade you. Hey, well, stick around. We still got a lot more work to do on this frame. Besides, the body's coming back from the blaster. We'll get to see what's left. Up next, Rick heats things up, and the Impala gets some cool air. Hey, Brent. What's up, man? Hey, this is looking killer. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, good job. Hey, we're going to get this finished up, then we can get our side plates on, flip it over, and get the rest of our bracing done. These flames are hot, and if our plan works out, they'll look like they've been embossed in the metal after it's powder coated. The side pieces are next to go on. The clamps help bring them in to the contour of the frame so we can get them tacked into place. We've welded on almost every inch of this thing so far, but we're not done yet, and we still have the other side to finish. Well, Brent gets those side panels finished up, I'm going to be working on the center brace. It's going to extend from the top and down the sides here and finish boxing in the center section. I'm going to try to do this out of one piece for no other reason but to keep it as strong as I possibly can. Now this is a pretty complex piece and it's going to require a detailed template to get the curves just right, but it's nothing some cardboard and a marker can't handle. Now just like the plates for the other side, I'm cutting it out with a plasma cutter grinding the edges off and tacking it into place. Now here's where it gets interesting. This piece, well it's got to be bent to shape. And the best way to do that, a lot of heat and a BFH. And of course, more welding. A few passes with a grinder and it's good to go. It's looking pretty good. And believe me, it's a lot heavier than when we started. Now we're going to be putting some pretty good sized wheels and tires on this thing and that means we're going to have to modify the body for clearance. There's a really good chance we're going to end up having to modify this frame also. So we're going to hold off finishing out the rear bracing until we get all the suspension mocked up. We gave our good friends over to Air Ride Technologies a call. They sent us an entire system. Now there's a lot of boxes to go through here so we're going to get everything unpacked, get it laid out and see what we got. This kit comes with everything we're going to need, but we're mocking it up just to make sure we don't need to drill any holes or make any modifications before we get it powder coated. These A-arms are specifically designed for use with the Shockwave airbags, so they bolt right in. 
Okay, now here's something I would have screwed up on if I hadn't read the instructions. This actually isn't sealant. This is an anti-galling compound, and that means you do still need to use your Teflon tape. A fitting goes on each of the bags, and they'll connect to the airlines from the compressor. Now, in some applications, you may need to clearance the spring pockets, but in this case, well, we lucked out and they dropped right in. And next comes the steering stops and then the spindles. Now, so far, the only modification we've had to make was adding a couple holes for the front sway bar. After the steering box is in, we can put on the idler arm and center link. Drop in the tie rod ends, connect them to the spindles, and the front is done. Now it's easier to attach all the bars to the rear end housing before it's mounted to the frame, so we'll go ahead and get this out of the way. Our chassis is looking great. We're getting pretty close to putting some air to it, so hang tight because we got more bars and bags coming up later in the show. Year One's all new 67 Mustang hits the track after the break. It's test and tune day for year one. We met up with Kevin King and the year one crew in Munford, Alabama, and got a sneak peek at what goes on at a year one track day. You know, we're out here to have a good time today. It is definitely a fun day, but it's work. Now, Kevin and the guys brought down several cars, but the test subject was this, their new 67 Mustang track car. This car is brand new. It's not been run on a track yet at all. It's been set up for the track with Griggs suspension, bare brakes, auto meter gauges, racing seats, and classic Ford wheels. The motor in this car is about a 480 horsepower Ford racing freight motor, and I suspect it'll push this car just fine for all we ever want to do. You know, we've been talking about it for so long now, and we took this car out to SEMA, and I'm just ready to go racing, so let's shut it up and go. If this is what year one calls work, I'm gonna swing by and grab an application. Now this car was dialed in pretty good at the year one shop but there's always a few wrinkles that need to be ironed out when you're putting together a race car. I went into the turn over there and uh, just barely did touch the brake and the rear lock completely up. Since these cars are built for the track, everything has easy access and most repairs and adjustments can be made with simple hand tools. A few turns of the wrench and year 167 is ready for more testing. With everything tight and running properly, all that's left are some minor suspension adjustments. What it does is when you go on that turn, the rear end wants to slide with you a little bit, and this will tighten it up so the rear end uh, won't want to come around with you. Year one didn't cut any corners on handling on this baby. A Griggs Racing front rear suspension setup comes complete with adjustable tubular control arms along with coilover shocks on all four corners. Up front, a stabilizer bar keeps everything in place, while out back, a three-link suspension coupled with an adjustable Watts link keeps the Mosier 31 spline nine-inch rear axle under control at all times. After several pit stops, some minor adjustments, and a little off-roading. Hey, somebody needs to vacuum this <laughs> That's what That car right there turns good now, let me tell you. <laughs> Except when you're in the grass. It was time to get the King's approval. You don't see many big 290-pound NASCAR guys, do you? Nothing rolls out of year one without Kevin King giving it the two thumbs up. And the track Mustang is no exception. After a few test laps, the moment of truth. That was cool. But the responsive is all get out. It was really nice to drive, easy to drive too. Easy in and out of the corners. Lots of power. Want to get behind the wheel of your own? <laughs> Wipe the drool off the screen and give your one a call. But wait till after the show, because we got a lot more work to do after the break. Coming up, the ups and downs of Air Ride. Hey guys, welcome back. We got a rear end housing bolted in. We're about ready to install the rest of our Air Ride setup. Now we're doing a complete mock-up on this chassis and that means that we need to get our axles in. Now this rear end housing from Curry is based on the Ford 9 inch. And that means that we don't have to install our center section in order to get our axles in. These retainer plates hold the axles and bearings in and also act as mounts for the rear brakes. The 
pan hard bar keeps the rear end centered on those hard turns. And the shocks, oh, well, they keep the rebound under control. Yeah, we ran into a little clearance issue here with this rear end. This aftermarket housing is using a bigger brace, which is great for strength, but now we've got an issue with clearance on our shock, so that means a little trimming is going to be in order. We'll touch up the bare metal with some paint later on to keep it from rusting. After pre-assembling the rear bags to the cups, they slide right into the spring pocket. These brakes from stainless steel look great, and right now that's about all they're doing is looking good. They're just mocked up for now, we're not going to bleed them out or anything. So let's get the wheels on it and get the sucker down on the ground. Foo sent us these 20 inch wheels for the front and a pair of 22s for the back. They look great in chrome, but we want a more sinister look, so we're going to black out the centers later on in our build. Now the compressor system won't be installed until the car is almost done, but we can still run the lines and use the shop compressor and a bottle valve to test everything out. Now is the fun part, time to drop her down and see what happens. Since our wheel and tire package <laughs> is slightly larger than our stock 14s, we're going to be watching for any binding or interference. Everything looks good. No binding in the suspension and plenty of clearance all the way around. Now the last thing we need to check before we finish our bracing is drive shaft clearance. And we're looking good there too. Now we can attach the last of our plates here now that our chassis has had a little altitude adjustment. We've made sure that our drive shaft is going to clear all of our bracing in here. But before we install them, there's a little something we've been dying to try out. Dimple dies. Using the press, the dies bevel the edges of the holes we cut. This type of thing is usually used to keep weight down, but we're not really concerned about that. Yeah, we just think it looks cool. But well, we're going to knock this chassis apart, finish welding in the rest of the bracing, and send this bugger off for powder coating. And that means that the body's up next. Man, we got a lot of work to do on that thing, so keep tuning in.